Hi, and welcome to the Reiki from the Farm podcast brought to you by me, Pam Allen LeBlanc from Hidden Brook Farm. I am a scientist, a businesswoman, and a licensed Reiki master teacher with the International Center for Reiki Training. Each week in this podcast, you'll be entertained as you learn about a wide variety of relevant Reiki topics, helping you become a more knowledgeable and effective Reiki practitioner. We caution you, though, this podcast may also dramatically improve your life, and we are so happy that you're here. Okay. Welcome everyone to this month's Reiki share and this week's podcast. I am still wearing my green party t-shirt because I'm just whipping home from canvassing and didn't really have time to eat dinner or change. But so please forgive me for that. But really glad to see you all tonight. And some of you have been asking how things are going with the campaign. So I'll just let you know that really well. It turns out there's all kinds of things that I didn't think I would enjoy about this, but I do. I'm an introvert, but I'm loving just meeting the people in my community and getting an opportunity to chat with them and ask what's on their mind at the door. And I guess we're doing something called a listening campaign is is there's a name for it, but we're just basically trying to touch base with people and see what their pain points are and, and what's working well for them and just gauging things accordingly as we put together our platform. We are going to be going to election probably in October. And I've started early, but I have a really large rural riding. So just, and riding is like the district that I'm in. So just to try to get everywhere. So just a little bit of an update on that. And then we'll move into our Reiki share tonight. First of all, I just want to say that I'm blown away that so many of you are here, 24 people here at such a busy time of year. But I love seeing you live and seeing your faces and getting a chance to talk with you afterward. So thank you for being here and for joining us. You all know that I, when it comes time for the podcasts and the Reiki shares, I always connect in with Reiki and I ask what we're talking about this week or this month. And so it was really interesting this time around. We're still a few days away from the solstice. And yet that was very clearly the energy that wanted to come in. And in fact, using the solstice energy to empower our goals. This is the halfway point through the year, whether we're in the northern or the southern hemisphere. And just checking in with where are we at with the things that we wanted to accomplish this year. And as always, at solstice time, I'm going to go into a little bit of the astrology and the importance of this time of year. And then we will be going into a lovely meditation to just release any barriers that might be preventing you from accomplishing your goals and just to get you into that energy of confidence and accomplishment. So that's where we're going. I do want to let you know, though, on a personal note, that this year, as we approach the solstice, there's something there is something personal for us. One of our older horses, Breaker Dawn, she is also known as Daybreak Dawn. Um, on her registration papers, she's 28 years old. She's been with us for the last 16 years since she was 12. We um, brought her from a breeding establishment and She's been an integral part of our lessons until she retired fairly recently. She's been blind for the last few years, and she's decided that this solstice is her time to to leave us. So I know that this solstice is going to be very emotional for me. It's going to be, I understand from an animal communication standpoint, I know that this is the right decision. This is what 
she wants and when she wants. And she, we had a huge birthday party for Breaker Dawn, our horse. Thanks to Bertina, who hosted it here at the farm. She had a huge birthday party and she even got to eat her own cake. And Joanne, who's here, made a beautiful artwork with Breaker Dawn in it that was actually the covering of the cake. And so she really has had an opportunity to say goodbye to a lot of the people who have meant a lot to her. And I know she's meant a lot to them. And so I'm just going to invite anybody listening, if you would like to send us um, some Reiki and send Dawn some Reiki on the morning of the solstice of June 20th, between 8.30 and 9 Atlantic time, which is an hour ahead of Eastern, that is the intention or that is when the appointment is set for. I want to thank Sheila, who's on the call tonight and who's actually going to be coming down as a death doula and assisting us all through that. But even though you know it's the best thing and even though you're very aware that this is what the animal is asking for or what they want, it's just never an easy decision. So really appreciate all of your support at this time, guys. After that, I am heading to the Omega Institute in Rhinebeck, New York for the Wisdom of Reiki Conference. That's June 21st to the 23rd. The Wisdom of Reiki Conference is going to be a lovely event at Omega Institute, which just going to Omega Institute is a lovely experience in and of itself. And I'm very thrilled to be one of the speakers talking about how to really expand what you do through your Reiki business. Colleen Benelli is also going to be there speaking about animal Reiki. William Rand is going to be talking about the history and foundations of Reiki. Brett Bevel will be there. And there are other wonderful speakers as well. They have they're looking for six more people to register. So if you've been on the fence about it or are thinking about it, there's a link to it in my newsletter. There's a link to it in my email signature to sign up or to register. And there's also going to be a link in this podcast. So go ahead and, and join us if it speaks to you. It seems like a nice place to spend the solstice and and it'll probably be good for me to get away for just a little bit after that july 22nd to 26 i have a reiki level one and two in master class in campobello the tuesday evening after the level one and two class and before the master class we will be going out to share reiki with the whales would love to have you join us campobello is a magical island if you decide to come in person, this is both in person and online. If you decide to come in person, the whale watching is definitely worthwhile. There's a small additional charge for that, but definitely worthwhile. It's a highlight. And do be sure to spend a few extra days because Campobello is such a beautiful island with the an international park, which is the summer home of Eleanor and Franklin Roosevelt miles and miles of hiking trails. It's just a, a magical place. And the following week, July 29th until August 2nd, I'll be having an animal Reiki ma one and two class followed by an animal Reiki master class. And those classes are through the week because I find on in the summer in, in our hemisphere, weekends are really hard to manage, but weekdays seem to be a little easier. And so that class is going to have the same thing on the Tuesday evening, weather permitting, we will go whale watching. So we'd love to have you join us. I also have some classes coming up at the farm in October, but I do want to let you know that I am probably going to need to move the class dates out by a few days to a week, just because I had thought the election might be already done by then. And right now, I've got a class the weekend before the election and my team tells me that's just not not going to be a thing. And with all of our hard work that I'll still need to be working that weekend on the election things. Getting back to the time of year, 
as we come up to the solstice, this is really a halfway point. It's an opportunity to check in on the things that we decided at the winter solstice and solidified around New Year's resolutions, our goals for 2024. It's time to think about what was happening half a year ago during the winter solstice, December 21st in the Northern Hemisphere, and that would have been the summer solstice for our friends in the Southern Hemisphere. Do you remember what was happening for you just before the Christmas holidays for those who celebrate great Christmas? Do you remember what you wanted to do in 2024, what you wanted to accomplish? I know for me, it became very clear that I needed to break down my goals to just a few very large goals around the election with the Green Party, around my animal communication work and my animal communication book and my Reiki courses and business. But what were your goals? If we look forward from tonight, and this is the June 11th when we are recording this podcast, we have 202 days until the end of the year. If we look forward to when our podcast goes live on Sunday, there will be 197 days until the end of the year. And if we go forward a little further to the solstice itself, June 20th, we have 194 days until the end of the, the year. So what? where are you at this coming into the halfway point? Where are you with your goals? And if you haven't accomplished them, don't worry. There's, there is lots of time, but it's just to bring that awareness. Where are you on your path and your purpose? And, and just to see if we can use or harness the energy of this solstice so that we can all move on track if we're not there right now. So I want to point out, and this is something that we talked about early in the year, 2024, so important. And why are the solstices and the equinoxes so important this year? Thanks to Kara, and you know who you are, Kara, one of my friends and students. She introduced me to Elizabeth Peru, does different numerology and astrology talks, Elizabeth and other numerology sources talk about the year 2024 as an eight universal year. So what does that mean? That means this is a time of abundance, success, and leadership. The number eight is really closely associated with financial prosperity, ambition, but it's also closely associated, and this is important, with the balancing of the material and spiritual aspects of our lives. Sometimes we can go too much toward one or the other. This is the year to balance that. It's also a year to balance the masculine and feminine. It's a year that is about responsible management of finances. It's about the pursuit of professional and personal goals and pursuing them with confidence and determination because you're going to reach them in this universal year. It also is a year that talks to us about themes of power, authority, karma. Basically, any decisions that we've made prior to this year, are going to come into fruition this year. This year is a time to achieve progress, significant progress with our careers, with our businesses, but at the same time, maintaining ethical standards, a balance between ambition and spiritual growth, that, that material and spiritual balance. And when it comes to the solstice, Peru talks about the importance of this time of year as a time of powerful energy shifts. This is the solstice, whether we're in the northern or southern hemisphere, is always a turning point. It's a time for reflection, realigning with our goals, our plans, our aspirations, everything that we hoped to work toward. It's also a time that we can harness that increased energy 
that surrounds us for personal growth. We can set our intentions for the next 200 or so days. We can, and, and in doing so, we don't have to necessarily work so hard to make it happen. We can use the natural cycles of change and renewal that come to us with this beautiful solstice energy. So this is a really transformative year. It's inviting us to harness our inner strength as we follow our ambitions. And it's inviting us to always maintain that balance between material success and spiritual fulfillment. And I must say that I'm really watching a lot of you, a lot of my students, myself, people in my life, just really beautifully navigate that and move into that place of lovely balance. And it's, it's lovely to witness. It's beautiful to witness. So if we take it a little further, though, and look at the astrology, what's been happening and what is happening, basically on June 3rd, Mercury entered Gemini. So that's around active minds, good communication. And then on June 12th, tomorrow, Venus is going to move into Gemini, which is more around enhancing our social connections and enhancing our creativity. So if you have some relationships that you want to nurture, some creative projects you want to get going, this is a great time to do it. The sun also moves into Gemini June 14th. And that brings in more of that intellectual and communication energy. We also, on June 6th, had a new moon in Gemini. So that means new moons are a great time for new beginnings, especially because it's in Gemini. If it's around communication, learning something new, and some smaller or short-term projects. On top of that, of course, we have the summer solstice, which this year is June 20th, and it's the winter solstice for our friends in the Southern Hemisphere. This is the longest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere and the shortest in the Southern Hemisphere. Wherever you are, though, it's a powerful time to set intentions and embrace either the peak of the light or dark season, depending on where you are. As we enter the peak light season in the Northern Hemisphere, and this is probably the only time I'm not going to need um, a light this month and maybe next month as I record my podcast with you in the evening, um, or in the Southern Hemisphere as you're entering the peak dark, you're moving more into a time of introspection as we're moving into a more extroverted time of summer here in the North. We also, on June 22nd, have a full moon in Capricorn. So this is about things related to our career, related to structure, related to responsibilities. So if you've been looking for some clarity around that, this full moon is likely to bring it in and it's likely to bring success for you in professional matters. So it's going to be a great time. Uh, I'll be at Omega then actually just wrapping up our Wisdom of Reiki conference. It'll be a great time to be there. We also then, a little later in the month, June 29th, Saturn is going to move into retrograde. And that's going to move us all into a period of introspection and reevaluation of those long-term goals, which is accurate because even if we go step away from the lunar calendar which we talk about with our solstice discussions and move into the roman calendar june 29th we're moving into that midway point of the year that july 1st so this is a time for that introspection reevaluation no matter what hemisphere that you're in and it's also a time to just look at our responsibilities, look at any lessons that we've learned or, and this sort of thing. And this retrograde keeps on until November 
14th. So it gives us a chance to really reassess and solidify our foundations. I once had a wonderful Reiki session with Colleen Benelli, my mentor. She mentored me through the ICRT, Licensed Reiki Master Teacher Program. And in it, we were talking about growth and the fact that you simply cannot always be in a place of growth because if you are, your foundation can't support it. And so we were really noticing how with our businesses, with our lives, with Reiki, with our spirituality, with all of it, you tend to go into a period of growth and then a bit of contraction, growth and contraction. And of course, we often focus on growth, but the contraction is just as important as the growth because it gives your foundations time to catch up with the growth. So this retrograde we're going to be in until November 14th is one of those really important times. I'm not saying that you're going to be in contraction. You may be into growth, but you'll probably be going through that wave or that phase, but it is an opportunity to solidify the foundations. So just bearing that in mind. So basically, astrologically, this is a busy month. Lots going on. Lots of opportunities for growth, for reflection, for transformation. And so today we want to harness those energies, particularly the energies around the solstice. So those of you who've been with me for a while know that I often try to do something special around solstices and equinoxes. Why is that? It's a cultural and historical thing. Many cultures, even today, still celebrate solstices with festivals and rituals that honor the sun, that honor its life-giving energy. Traditional practices are everything from bonfires and feasting to parties and reflecting abundance and the peak of the growing season here in the, the south and the closing down of the growing season as you're into the winter solstice, uh, sorry, here in the north in, in, in for our southern neighbors. So historically, the solstice has always been important. Um, and in many cultures, it still is. And I, I think it's something that I just wanted to keep alive because when you are um, involved in energy, you become aware that spiritually, this solstice is a time for illumination and enlightenment. In the Northern Hemisphere, it's the triumph of light over darkness. And for our friends in the South, it's moving into the opposite direction, that time of introspection. And it's really important to be aware of those natural rhythms that are all around us. This is a time, no matter where we are, for setting our intentions, for doing any rituals of gratitude, embracing growth. The peak of light here in the north represents clarity and vision. It's an ideal time for meditation and for manifestation practices, and that's what we're going into today. The solstice is also important to agriculture. Here in the northern hemisphere, this is a pivotal point in our agricultural calendar. It's a time to begin preparing for harvest, which is going to come for us here where I live, more around the equinox. But I do have to tell you that I had sandwiches on lettuce wraps today that I picked the lettuce from my garden and I even had just enough arugula to sprinkle in. So I'm, I am just starting to get the beginnings of the early items to harvest. The radishes aren't quite ready, but I can see they will be there soon. So this is a time to get ready for that. It's a time of growth and productivity, planning for the future. This time of year just reminds us that we are connected to the natural world and the cyclical rhythms of life, even if we live in cities and don't remember that connection or don't always feel connected. This is a time to celebrate, reflect, and renew. Astronomically, 
This is the first day of summer, the solstice that we're moving into in the northern hemisphere, the first day of winter in the southern hemisphere, the longest day of the year in the northern hemisphere due to the axial tilt of the earth, bringing the North Pole closest to the sun and the shortest day for our cousins in the south. And interestingly, this year, the solstice falls, I guess it often does, as the sun moves into Cancer, signifying a shift toward a more nurturing energy that's more focused on home. And some of you might have noticed that. You might have already moved into that. So again, introspection, emotional connection, and personal growth. So today, around our solstice, I'd like to lead us into a meditation to just help us embrace the solstice and reflect on our goals and just move into harnessing that solstice energy to help us accomplish our goals in the coming year. I think with everything that I've heard and seen and witnessed and felt around 2024, this is a pivotal year for so many reasons. It's a time when we are really and truly stepping out of that outer authority and moving into a place of inner authority. It's a place where we're moving into balance between the material and the spiritual, the, the masculine and the feminine. It's a really pivotal time for growth. And so if you too want to harness this energy to bring personal growth, that's what we're going to step into. So just before we move into our meditation today, I just want to check in and see if anybody has any questions or anything that you'd like to share. Please feel free to unmute yourself if you do. I see, okay, just a few comments in the share, but nothing. All right, let's go ahead then and go into our meditation today. And we're doing well with time, so we should have um, a nice bit of time to bring in this energy. And I know we're a little early, but I am really feeling the energy of solstice swirling around us already. So we can bring it in even this evening a few days early. I'd like to invite you to go ahead and make yourself comfortable. Close your eyes. I'm just taking a few deep breaths and bringing your hands into Gasho with your palms together and your thumbs at your heart. For those of you who have Reiki, just activating your Reiki energy and bringing in your Reiki symbols and if you're listening and don't have Reiki yet, please feel free to tap into the collective energy of our group and my Reiki energy that's just surrounding you now for everyone listening. And just allow your body to relax and your mind to settle as you bring in any specific symbols that you're guided to use today. And we'll just breathe here for a few moments as everybody surrounds themselves with the energy of Reiki. We just acknowledge the beautiful, enlightened beings who are here with us. God, whatever name you use, the angels, the archangels, the divine animals, the brothers and sisters of the light, those beautiful beings of the higher heavens who are here to support us always, even. times when we're not aware that they're there and when we feel alone. 
We acknowledge that they're standing at the corners of the land and on every side of us and that they are not only supporting us, but they are connecting us with each other. Connecting us with the earth, connecting us with the heavens, connecting us with ourselves. Just placing your hands comfortably on your body now, wherever you feel guided, as you just imagine roots growing down from the base of your spine, through the soles of your feet, reaching deeply into the earth, going through the soil and the bedrock and connecting us with the groundwater beneath us. It can be so easy to get lost in our heads, to get disconnected from the earth. And yet when we connect with the groundwater below us, we are instantly grounded, instantly connected to the place where we are. And just feel the grounding energy of the earth providing that stability and support to you now. Feel the connection with the groundwater, knowing that as each of us connects with the groundwater, we are connecting with each other. And if you consider that our bodies are made mostly of water, we're creating a beautiful web of light and energy that encircles the earth. As you breathe, just imagine drawing on every inhale, drawing this grounding energy up through your roots and into your body. Going all the way up through all of your chakras, through the top of your head and all the way up through the soul star that's a few feet above your head, connecting you with the heavens. And just notice this energy fill your body with a sense of safety and connection with each other, with the earth, with ourselves. I invite you to place your hands on your heart now. And as you do, just imagining the beautiful energy of Reiki coming down through the chakras beginning at the soul star above your head, down through your crown chakra, the top of your head, your third eye, your brow chakra, your throat chakra, your heart, your sacral chakra, your solar plexus, your base chakra, and all the way down through your feet and through those roots and through the earth star beneath your feet going all the way through that central channel of your body. And so you feel yourself filled with the energy of the earth and the energy of the heavens, very balanced. And you feel the energy is filling you now and it begins radiating from you from your heart center and that just envelops you in a cocoon of light that fills your aura. And as it continues to fill, it goes beyond your aura and begins to fill the room that you're in. It begins to fill the entire space, the building, the property. And just imagine that there's a beautiful bright sun filled with all of the frequencies of Reiki energy. And this sun is shining on you brightly. And just notice its warmth and light pouring into your being, energizing and revitalizing you no matter which hemisphere you're in. 
I invite you to allow this solstice energy to just illuminate every part of your body, every part of your mind, and every part of your spirit. Allow this light to dissolve any darkness, any blockages, any difficulties that you've experienced. They may have taken up residence within you. And this makes space for new beginnings and growth. And we're going to breathe here together for 12 breaths, just allowing this energy to dissipate, to release into the earth and into the heavens making space for new beginnings and new growth. I invite you now to think back to any goals or intentions you set for yourself at the beginning of the year. And some of you were with me here on the Reiki Share, and we did this together. But regardless, thinking back to that, I'd like you to just take a moment to reflect on your progress and on any challenges you faced. And then, this is very important, without judgment, just acknowledge your journey. Acknowledge the effort that you've put in so far. And then let it all go. I invite you to imagine a path before you in front of you now that is illuminated by the solstice light, leading you closer to your goals, the energy of effortlessness. I invite you to move your hands now over your solar plexus, which is just above your navel. And as you do, I invite you to focus on your inner power and your determination. Think of all the things that you've managed to accomplish in your life so far, and it's a lot. If you're here, you've accomplished a lot. And as you focus on that inner power and determination, just imagine this beautiful golden light is glowing and growing in your solar plexus now. And with every breath, it grows brighter. 
This light is your confidence, your willpower, your stick-to-itiveness, determination. I invite you to imagine the light expanding and reaching out to each of your goals and then infusing your goals with both your personal power and the energy of the solstice as well as the energy of Reiki. And we'll breathe together here for 12 breaths as we empower our goals. Imagine yourself walking confidently on your life path, in your purpose, as each step is supported by the earth itself beneath you and guided by the solstice light above. Feel the Reiki energy swirling around you, supporting you, surrounding you, providing the strength and clarity that you need to move forward. Affirm to yourself now, I am aligned with my path. I am moving forward with confidence and clarity and my goals are within reach. And we're going to spend some time here in silence today again, just allowing those goals to become completely empowered, just allowing you to align perfectly with your path and your purpose. Once again, affirm to yourself, I am aligned with my life path. I am moving forward with confidence and clarity and my goals are within reach and we'll remain here together today, soaking in the energy of the solstice and the Reiki.
I'd like to invite you to stay here as long as you'd like. But when you feel ready, you can bring your attention to your eyes and bring your awareness back into the room. Gently open your eyes and return. But I invite you to take a moment to sit in the stillness and continue integrating the energy of this meditation. Together we take a moment to thank the Reiki energy and the solstice light for their guidance and their support. If you feel guided to, you can take some time to write in your journal. I invite you to continue using this meditation as often as you wish, especially around the solstice, to just continue harnessing the powerful energies that surround us now. It can help you stay connected to your goals and just continue moving confidently on your life path and with your purpose. I'd also like to thank each and every one of you for being here with me today. Thank you. And namaste.